Okay, here we go. Uh, last time, uh, yes, we started looking into operational amplifier, and we said the first stage of an operational amplifier is a DFAM, differential amplifier. And uh, if you have used the OPAM recently, uh, you have seen that there are two terminals. One they call V minus, the other they call V plus, are essentially the two input terminals of a DFAM. Okay. So, we have already done something, but I just want to recollect. So, you can see the input to a OPAM is essentially input to a differential amplifier. Now, this here shown here, as if there is only one output, there is a possibility that it may have two outputs. So, call it VO1, VO2, and I can actually take a difference between the two and can get VO1 minus VO2 as my new outputs. Okay. Or I may see I only get one of those outputs, the other is not relevant the way I do as in most op amps and we say that is my VO, is that correct. One small thing you must understand, the circuit shown here or the symbol shown here does not have any connection between V0 and Vn except for the capacitances. Uh, there are CGDs and they will give some connection. So, there will be poles and zeros associated all the time even if we do not say they are capacitances. However, all op amp circuits barring exceptions I will say, uh, there are no internal capacitances CC1, CC2 or CC or there is no such capacitances present in any operational amplifier. So, what is the advantage of such system? What is CC1, CC2 were doing? They were decoupling DC and AC. So, the trick here is now what I am saying that an op amp can also receive DC inputs, is that correct? Op amp can receive DC input, all other amplifiers we do not amplify DC, what do we amplify? Only AC signals, but it is different from all normal single ended amplifier DFAM is or uh, op amp is that one can amplify DC signals, is that correct? That is the major difference between normal single ended amplifier which are small signal AC amplifiers. So, if I really plot the Bode plot for that, what will be the typical gain you will see from here if I played gain versus frequency. At 0 frequency gain is not 0 or not falling. So, typical characteristics of a Bode plot will be something like this even at DC 0 frequency there will be a finite DC gain. Now, this DC gain is same as what we say otherwise DC gain. Okay. So, that is the major difference we should understand that in the case of op amps or in diff amps even at DC outputs are possible, is that correct? So, in all my analysis ahead why I am showing you this, I am actually not differentiating too much between small i d capital I d. So, I may use a term like I d which actually takes care of AC plus DC or only DC or only AC as if I am having some signal which is getting at the outputs. Okay. Is that clear to you? So, that is slight symbolization sometimes because you know we have been talking single ended amplifiers small signal ones and we are very categorically saying small, small, small we say input ACs only. Okay. Here we may see what is the difference. However, normal gain of this amplifier which is a small signal gain is still an AC gain, whereas the DC gains are not possible if this circuit acts. What will happen? If there is an input signal between this input terminal, the output because there will be large gain of an amplifier, the output will go where? Gain times the input, where it will go? Very large value, but the maximum value available to you are what? Maximum minimum? VDD and VSS. So, actually the output may become either VDD or VSS depending on this is higher or this is higher, is that clear? What is this circuit should be called therefore? I have two inputs, if this is higher this goes to minus VSS, if this is higher compared to this, this goes to plus VDD. Comparator. So, I can now use the same op amp if I compare the two inputs I, depending on the output whether it is VDD or VSS, 
one can declare VDD as 1 minus Vs is 0 and therefore it is like a logic block. A two input signals can be compared and the output can become digital 1 and 0. Is that correct? This is the advantage of OPAM over normal single ended amplifier and therefore we want to know what exactly goes in, how this is possible and that is why the present thing we have started with differential amplifier. Is that clear why we are so keen? Because every other circuit in future will use OPAM and whether it is A to D converters or D to A converters or any filters everywhere will use operational amplifiers. And since we are going to use operational amplifier, the first thing we must know what it contains and why it gives such a behavior which we can then utilize ahead in systems. Is that okay? So this issue which yesterday or day before yesterday I did not say, I thought I just started DFAM because it was a evening time, I mean late, late in the class. So I thought maybe that time I did not spend time, but you must know my context why I am doing this. I do not do anything here which I do not think I will use later unless I have some reasons to say okay I will I know it is important but I do not want to use it. Right now I say whenever I do something it has a repercussions ahead that is why whatever I teach today will be required tomorrow, tomorrow means next. Okay, having shown you the operational characteristics, uh, operational amplifiers. So also one interesting feature about this OPAMS is this which is also interesting to show you because if I plot uh, VO versus V in of a operational amplifier depending on if I can ground this and take a reference minus V in also can occur. So I will find sorry it will cross to 0. There is a range in which for minus V in or plus V in the output will be high I mean linearly follow it and at certain higher input signal it will start saturating. So even in OPAM there is a limit up to which input swings will be allowed to have larger outputs beyond which what will happen they will saturate and then what is the essentially whenever the output saturated what is the gain? Gain is 0. Essentially it will never reach 0 but it will be a very small gains will start coming closer to 0 and because of that the outputs will be non-linear and non-linear if I expand it in a Taylor series or a Fourier series then I will get different frequency components omega 1, omega 2, omega 1, 2, omega 2, omega 1 plus minus omega 2 these are called harmonics okay. So if you operate somewhere here not only omega 1 your major frequency output will appear which will be much reduced because part of the power will be delivered to other frequency components is that clear. So one does not want to operate in the saturation around saturation region. So there is a limited range even for DC is that correct it, even for DC there is a limited range in which amplifier will act like a linear amplifier. Is that clear? Otherwise, it will be a non-linear amplification in which it means that other frequency components will receive started receiving power. Okay. This fact has to be understood that even OPAM, I keep saying DC, it does not mean 100 volt I apply and I will get 1000 volts because if that have occurs, it will be a great thing you know with a small device I can have a generators put everywhere in the houses and I can supply power without any power coming from anywhere else such a thing thermodynamics will not allow. So therefore, there cannot be such uh, energy creation without any other creation giving energy. So do not believe that it will have infinite ranges, it will have limited ranges for amplifications as well. Yes, no because linear region is sin omega t term, all sin omega terms will only get amplified. No, no it will as I say please confu do not confuse between DC and AC, okay. AC signals will get all other frequency components. DC signal cannot get it will just saturate to a one DC value on the plus side or the minus side. Is that clear, clear to you? If I have a only DC inputs either it will go to VDD at the output or VSS. Okay. But if I AC signal overriding a bias voltage then that AC signal in the non saturation region you see understand how do I write non saturation A0 plus A1x plus A2x square you write the expansion series x square term means sin square omega t. 
sin square omega t means 2 sin omega t minus 1. So, 2 omega t term appeared you take the cube you will get 3 omega t terms. So, you can see when small signal A c goes it will give harmonics D c does not is that clear it will give a fixed value of 2 D c value that is what comparator does it actually fixes it to a fixed 2 value. So, it will enhance by that much gain whatever D c value input you have into the gain that is the dv0 by dv in which is your gain multiplied by the dc input that is the output voltage. No, it will not because in those regions there is no signal ok the device is not introducing any harmonics from itself. The device gives you no, uh, non -harmonic, uh, harmonic content because in non-linear relationship the term square cube four terms are occurring and that only when you have sin omega t as signal then sin square omega t sin cube omega t they will give 2 omega t 3 omega t and combination of these as the signals ok. So, only AC is give, will give this kind of ok. Uh, we looked into yesterday that a differential amplifier can be in the MOS differential amplifier or it can be VJT. I will not do B I may be at the end of this diffam I may just show you a bipolar uh, uh, diffam I may solve something the similar thing has happened in MOS, but other things you read in the book which I have officially said Cedra Smith and me ok. So, read there uh, the other parts of bipolars ok. I will only do MOS parts and will expect you that you read bipolars ok. If you have an issue that ok it is not same and it is not correctly coming and you do not understand that part we may do again in the class. Otherwise, we assume that techniques are same and therefore, can be applied to any other blocks as well ok. So, we said we define two signals if V in 1 and V in 2 are my inputs to a differential amplifier which has two input ended signal uh, two single it is not single ended it is a two inputs. Then we define signals as V i d which is subtraction of the V in 1 and V in 2 whereas, there is another signal we call common mode which is the average of the two V in 1 plus V in 2 by 2. Now, as I said yesterday the fam has the advantage that noise normally is common mode. What does it mean? On the both terminal noise has same sense ok or same amplitudes and the diffam has the biggest advantage that it rejects common mode signals. That means, anything which is common output does not show that is that clear. So, if there is a noise over reading on your signal and if it is common mode which will should have will normally will occur then the output will not show noise amplification is that clear that is the advantage why diffams are or opams are used because it rejects other signals which is common mode. And the word there we use is what common mode rejection ratio how much it can reject is the criteria of a good op amp large CMRR should be good, but this word will come back and say no do not go 125 dB CMRR or 200 dB CMSMR because if that happens something else will be hurt heavily your bandwidth may not be there phase will not be occurring. So, there are issues, but larger the uh, CMRR larger is the uh, or rather better is the circuit for operational or diffams ok. So, uh, ulti minimum diffam CMRR should be around 80 to 85 dB should exceed a not more than 120 dB, but around that 120 is ok I am not saying it is bad, but never try for CMRR of 200 ok. In fact, the theoretically the CMRR may come as infinite how much theoretically ideal situation CMRR is infinite ok but there is nothing ideal in the world. So, a CMRR is never infinite in the world ok. So, we will see why that does not occur ok. So, this is just what we did just the other day uh, ok. We said a diffam has two single ended amplifier in which their sources are connected and there are two uh, resistances there are two single ended amplifiers assume R D 1 is equal to R D 2 equal to R D then this is the circuit which we call the differential amplifier or diffam in short diffam ok. Uh, this ISS is the biasing current is in mass it is normally called ISS in bipolar they call it ICC or just I ok. So, if you are doing otherwise just look they only make capital I that is it. VSS is the negative supply 
So, op amps will always are having dual rail power supply, what is my dual rail plus VDD and minus VSS, but there are single rail op amps also available that is only VDD, is that clear? I am not trying to say that single rail op amps are bad or worse, uh, of course bad, they are worse than dual rail power supply based op amps, okay. This has, I repeat again, has anyone started looking why negative voltages are relevant in analog whereas in digital we never look for it. Think of it, what is the advantage I get? Difference wise still I am VDD minus VSS minus V, that is the net voltage if it is 2.5, 2.5 it is 5 volts. So, I could as well put 5 volts single supply. If I have 5 volt supply I can make 2.5 minus 2.5 which is also 5 or I make 5 0, but why I do 2.5 minus 2 and normally we also see that the same opposite is occurring 2.5 minus 2.5 not 3 and minus 2 okay that also has some disadvantage. Okay. So, think of it maybe at the end of OPAM I will say why dual rails, dual rails are very relevant okay. Some partial answers I gave someone who asked me here, but I will give them more detail later. Uh, Let us say the first case uh, defam please remember I again show this. V in 1, V in 2 are the two inputs and the common mode is V in 1 plus V in 2 by 2 difference signals is V in 1 minus V in 2 okay. Let us say DFAM has same inputs at the both end V in 1 and V in 2 is that correct? So, how much is difference? 0, but what is the common mode? V in plus V in by 2 means V in is that correct? V in 1 plus V in 2 if they are equal that means both side the signals are same V in okay. So, V in 1 is equal to V in 2 and since they are connected at the gates V g 1 and that is equal to V g 2 is that correct? This is the common mode part in that. Now, you can see from here in our circuit can I show you little bit the source of both call it M1, M2 for future. Source of this both transistors are connected common they are same. So, what will be the potential on both side will be different or same? Same because at, a, at any node there can be only single voltage that voltage I call V s source voltage is that correct? So, how much is V g s for this? V in 1 minus V s how much is this V in 2 minus V s is the V g s for M 2, but since V in 1 is equal to V in 2 and call it V in both transistors have same V g s is that correct? If they are same devices of same threshold V g s minus V t is also same. Let us say I s s is so balanced that they give sufficient current so that both devices remain in saturation. So, what is that means? this current half will come here, half will come here because both are VGS minus VT is same for both devices is that correct? Because if they are equal VTs are same the half half current must flow through them that is exactly what she said yes. We do not apply it comes if I apply V in 1, V in 2 there will be a possibility that they may be equal at a point is that clear? So, common mode is a not necessarily of course, noise is essentially is a common mode signal is not it. Actually, I will show you the gain there how do we uh, given a difference signal it can always be represented as sum of common mode and difference mode ok. okay. Uh, so, we say V g 1 is equal to V g 2 is equal to V g s 1 equal to V g s 2 and we define V c m as V in 1 V in 2 V g s 1 V g s 2 and the source voltage is of course, V g s V c m minus V g s ok. What is why it is say sorry not V g s actually it is V g, V g minus V s is the signal there V g s ok. So, we say V c m is source voltage is V g s minus V t is that correct? V g s minus V t is the drop across that. That is we defined as V o V, V g s minus V t we defined as V o V. So, we substitute there since V g s 1 is equal to V g s 2, one can always say that I d 1 plus I d 2 are equal if they are half half situation if they are equal, 
but even if they are not equal the issue now please take it here they are equal is that correct even if v in 1 is not same as v in 2 one may have larger current than the other but the net current will be how much the is because that is what you fixed so sum of i d 1 plus i d 2 will always be equal to i s s if they are equal so which each will be i s s by 2 if not equal one will have a larger value than the other this is what diffam allows okay if they are equal half half if they are not equal one will draw larger other will be drawing smaller but some total will only come to i s s independently this is exactly what we are looking into okay v g minus v s is v g s but v s is common to both okay so is that clear to you because the subtraction is same for both is that correct same because v s is common voltage okay okay so if i do that if i d 1 is equal to i d 2 it is i s s by 2 but we know the current in the uh, this is half beta n dash w by l by 2 v g s minus v t square ISS is then represented as VOV square. So, VOV is 2 ISS upon beta and dash by W by L. At what point, what, where is this defined? When the current is half half in both circuits, is that clear? ID1 is ISS by 2 and ID2 is also ISS by 2. For this condition, VOV has been defined. Normally, we do not define that way, we define only normal, but in this case for the common mode i d 1 is equal to i d 2 and at that condition the v o v is defined by 2 i s s upon beta n dash into w by r ok. Thoda maths ye isko idhar le jau isko idhar le jau ya jai ok. This half this is half beta w is uh, w by l but the current essentially this is i s s please remember what is i s s if one of the device is working it is beta n dash by 2 v g s minus v t square. If it is half current, half the current will go to i s s by 2 on one side, i s s by on the other side. I agree what you are saying, I fully appreciate, but okay, call it like this to say that okay. If one of the device is operating, normally we define that my VOV, okay, one of the transistors. Since it is half the current for individual cases when equal currents are there, we now define a new VOV which is related to half currents. ISS ka to pura formula hai aadha ke liye aadha aadha kar diya uska. Is that clear? And for that we define new VOV. That is for single transistor with one drive completely driven by it. But since it will be half half, then I say for that half we define new VOV. This is a I agree we need not have defined, we should have kept normal VOV also. It would have come additional two terms somewhere there, fair enough, nothing goes wrong, is that clear? It is only a nomenclature which uh, Cedra Smith has been using and I thought since you are going to read that book, I should follow their nomenclature, otherwise I myself would not have done it, I agree with you. What we are, he is saying, this four, why this half is coming here, this half is essentially this is a normal I, IDS current for any transistor. So I say if only ISS is flowing in one transistor half beta into VGS minus VT should have been the current is that correct. But since each is driving only ISS by 2 I am just dividing it by half both sides. No, no, no that is what I am saying you know when one transistor works if that is what say the definition was something like this that if only one of the two transistor works the other does not all the current will flow through one and that I call half beta n dash w by l into v g s minus v t square whatever v g s for that transistor is that clear to you that is the current it will flow. Now you say if it is half half then the v g is equal still equal okay but the current is now shifted half half. So I divide the current by half old one whatever we use earlier, ada either, ada either. Okay, we will come back to, yeah, modify kiya ja sakta, do not worry. This is what they have done it, I normally, I would have agreed, I would not have done it, but since they, they are following this method, I thought I should give you their method, okay. You are perfectly justified. 
So, what is V D now? Can you tell me V D? Okay. So, what is the drop at the drain? The resistor drop I D into R is the V D D minus that should be the output voltage. So, V D 1 is equal to V D 2 equal to V O 1 equal to V O 2 is V D D minus I S S by, by 2 times R D if R Ds are equal otherwise they may also not be same. Then what is the output subtract subtraction of V O 1 and V O 2 0. If they are 0 what do you expect the gain? If the output which is defined by me as V O 1 minus V O 2 and input is how much? Common mode V in equal to V in 1 equal to V in 2. So, what is the common mode gain? What is the common mode gain? Output voltage divided by common mode signal. Output voltage is how much? 0 V O 1 minus V O 2 is 0. So, the common mode gain is 0 in the case of differential amplifier that is what the rejection word is clear to you that any signal which is common will not get amplified at the output if the difference of output is collected. Is that clear? If the difference is collected V O 1 minus V O 2 there is no gain for the common mode signals. Now, question is is this valid statement because it is not true because the way we will define latter which we just now said word CMRR is essentially called ADM difference gain upon common mode gain. Okay. So, what is CMRR for this? Infinite and as I say ideally that means this condition which I put is an ideal condition ACM is 0 is an ideal condition why it does not occur as 0 and how much it will occur we will go and actually evaluate the ACM is that correct? No, it is not 2, 4, it is equal. In common mode, the signals are same. V in 1 is equal to V in 2 is only common mode. Some other input. Correct. So, so the correct, uh, if the two signals has a component which is difference possible, they will get amplified, but the common will reject itself. Yeah, so you think it has to be linear for that. Yeah, but we have already said we will always operate in a linear mode. That is what I day 1 I started we will see to it your biasing is such and VO, VN is such restricted that we are always in the linear mode. That superposition is guaranteed by us is that correct? That is what I started with you when I showed you that I am always going to stick in this is that clear and that condition is still valid. If your doubt is doubt so let us clear the doubt. If this is for any transistor this is my Vg and this is my Vs. If this is my Vg and this is my Vs. So, what is Vgs for do? Vg2 minus Vs is Vgs2, Vgs say Vg1 minus Vs is Vgs1. If Vgs1 is Vg1 is equal to Vg2, Vgs1 must be equal to Vgs2 that is what I said. Yeah that, that is because the difference between the two is same what I said is okay oh sorry I made a mistake you I should write Vg minus Vg 1 minus Vg 2 is always equal to Vgs 1 minus Vg yeah yeah I agree with you yeah your point of view is valid what I said may be I wrong what I essentially saying what she is saying is that the difference is equal Vgs is equal to Vgs yeah you are right the idea was that Vs since it is common this it will also get as if close to 0. The reason why I said for AC this potential will go to 0. So, that is for that e AC part yes they are equal for DC they are not you are right are, yeah 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 you are right VGS 1 is equal to VGS 2 okay perfectly justified okay. Uh, normally our assumption in this that all transistors are identical all resistances are identical and the current source is ideal current source please take these three conditions in deriving this thing we made three possible this one is the two transistors are fully identical the w bias are equal the thresholds are equal okay second condition we said rds are exactly equal and third condition say the current biasing current source is ideal is that correct? If there is a resistance there, there may have some issues. Okay. 
three conditions are called ideal conditions. Under that state, yes, the common mode gain will be infinite, infinite or sorry 0 and therefore TMRR will become infinite. Please take three conditions, is that clear three conditions? Okay, I should say third one also and ISS is ideal current source. I will come to it this very soon and I will show you why I said so. Okay. Otherwise the current in both VO1, VO2 will be different for both even if the currents are same. So, so essentially VO1 minus VO2 will never be 0 then even for half currents. If RDs are not equal then the drop across them are not equal so the subtraction will not be 0. So if they, that is what I say since if they are not equal that means there will be some difference voltage. So, common mode will not go to 0, there will be some finite value. Is that clear? VO1 minus VO2 will not become 0, then it will have some value which will be smaller because RD1, RD2, even if they are not equal, they may not be true for 110k, 100k, 10.05k, 10.02k. That is because of the process which these transistors are made, one cannot guarantee. But how do we say we guarantee on these circuits? Why did I say it? In integrated circuits, this is doable. Discrete nothing is doable. Is that correct? In discrete I can never guarantee RD1 equal to RD2. Kitna bhi sort resistors leke hao. Since most of the meter given to you to monitor is you are only using ohm meter, uska least count itna kam hai, jada hai ki 10.0 ke aage kuch wo correctness dehi nahi sakta hai. So, you always feel both are 10, okay. Essentially, if you have a good uh, measurement system, you will find they are not equal and if they are not equal, even with everything else V T equal, firstly V T will not be equal for two transistors, okay. So, in which case what is going to happen is V O 1 minus V O 2 will be some finite quantity which means ACM will be some finite small quantity but finite quantity. Ideally it should go to 0 and therefore CMR rejection should be almost infinite, okay. How good is this number is what we are going to see, okay. As I say how much I said you? Please remember this is range you must work in real circuits. 80 to 120 dB mein hi CMRR hona chahiye. Usse bada kiya to kya hoga, usse kam kiya to kya hoga. Ye sochin laik hai. Hmm? Okay. Is that okay? These numbers are only for those who are someday going to work on integrated circuits designs. For this, these numbers are crucial. Okay. Okay. There are two. Uh, these are two, I am just, this is not the ideal way I am explaining, but just there is another term which all OPAM people use and they call input common mode range, what they call it ICMR and this is essentially coming from the DFAM itself, so shown here. Is that word clear? Input common mode range. So what does that mean in your mind without seeing this? What does that I mean? input common mode range. So, what is the maximum and minimum common mode voltage which are possible which will allow device to operate and saturation both transistor to remain in saturation and in linear mode. Is that correct? If that occurs we say this is the maximum VCM and another is minimum VCM. So, you must work within this. So, what does that mean? If the noise overreads this value then it will show you at the output as well. Is that clear? So, there is a limited range in which VCM can be operated. Okay, here is some tricks on that. Ye general method mein aapko bata deta hu. Ye iske liye hi nahi hai. Pure circuit walo ke liye hai. Whenever I want to get a maximum value which is occurring at the input, you always go from VDD. You calculate from VDD down. Is that correct? Whenever I want the minimum value, you should always calculate from ground or minus VSS towards the input. Is that point clear? These two terminologies you take independent of this which I am going to use. I repeat, for the maximum value you come from this, for the minimum value you come from this. Whenever any maximum values at input or you are trying to see, for maximum start from power supply and for the minimum start from minus VSS. Either say ye kitna or either say that means maximum value is decided by VDS of this and RD of this. Minimum value is decided by this 
as well as the VGA sub. Is that clear? So, these two values are different from each other and one gives max, other gives minimum. This is true for this circuit, true for any circuit in which such calculations are to be performed. Is that correct? I repeat for the max start from higher end to the point where you want and for the minimum go from the lowest end to the point where you want to come. This is the standard method which should go here independent of what I am going to teach now. Okay. This I keep saying it because you should know the way tricks we follow later. Okay. So, we say VCM occurs when M1, M2 are the age of saturation. When both transistors are at the age of saturation, we say that is VGS minus VT is equal to VDS. So, we say what is common mode at the gate source voltage. Okay. So, VC max minus VT is equal to VDD minus ISS RD, half the current. Both transistors are half half. VC maximum minus VT is equal to VD. Is that current? What is this value? Again, see the circuit. I just now said VDD minus this drop, you are here at the drain. Please look at it. VDD minus this drop, you are at this end. Then you want actually VGD. What do you want? To reach here, you need a VGD. But if you say VGS minus VT equal to VDS, I can get VGD, which is VT. Is that clear? So I can get this into V t plus V t as I repeat, if this is at the saturation, I am now saying okay, the, that expression anyway I am showing you, V c max minus V t is equal to V d s. Okay. At that point, it is at the age of saturation, V g s minus V t is equal to V d s is the age of saturation. So, if I substitute this and that voltage must be equal to V d s which is V d d minus this, this. So, if I equate them, then I get Vc max is Vd, Vt plus Vdd minus ISS by 2 into Rd. Is that correct? This is the maximum input common mode possible. What is the condition it is, it will, if you go beyond that, this condition will get violated. Is that correct? Device will enter which region? Linear region and then your whole linearity will be lost. Is that correct? Is that point clear? So, that condition which I put is the device should remain in saturation, but the maximum will come when it is at the age of saturation. Is that correct? So, that is the condition. Now, coming to the minimum side, from where I should take minimum? From the source side. Uh, the minimum occurs such that Vs, which is the source voltage, please remember source voltage is a just source voltage. Hai, ये इस करंट सोर्स कहां कैसे बनाते हैं करंट सोर्स आपको पता है हाउ डू आई मेक अ करंट सोर्स इफ आई यूज ए ट्रांजिस्टर पुट ए प्रॉपर वीजीएस एंड दिस एंड आई सी टू इट दैट द करंट इज कांस्टेंट हियर ओके इज दैट क्लियर देन इट बिकम्स ए एंड व्हाट इज द अदर प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ अ करंट सोर्स नॉट दैट द ओनली करंट इज कांस्टेंट और source is close to infinite, okay. that is the condition of a good current source. So, there is a voltage drop across this transistor V d s of the current source. So, this V s is essentially V s minus V s s is how much? The V d s of the current source, that name I have given as V c m, V c s. What is V c s? is the current source voltage drop, current source not ideally what should be the voltage drop? 0, okay. but it is not ideal. So, it should be some drop across the VDS which is the VDS of that transistor is the VCS number I gave you. So, the v, VDS for the current source is Vs minus minus Vss, please take it this is minus or minus that means it adds in fact, is that correct? V s minus of minus means actually that voltage is adding to that is offset plus value it, has, it will give. So, the V c minimum then is okay, first you remove this V t is this, it is this V j please take it this voltage 
please take it what I am saying. The minimum value is VGS plus VCS. Is that correct? Is that clear? This value plus this value is the input. Is that correct? So, if I do that, I write VC minimum is VGS plus VCS my VCS minus v, which is equal to minus VC just now I wrote common source voltage VDS for that. So, we say and I added VT and subtracted VD why did I do that just to make it some VOV term appearing there ok. Actually this VT was not there but I just added and subtracted. So, I get VOV plus VT plus VCS plus VSS ok is why it is a minus VSS but it will become plus why VSS is negative quantity. So, this is called VC minimum. So, what is the input common mode range then? What is range called? Maximum minus minimum is that correct? What is the range? Max minus min. So, VC max minus VC min is the input common mode range. What are the two conditions it is satisfying? One is device is at the age of saturation, it, it goes at best to the age of saturation for maximum input signal to allow in common mode, ok. And it goes to the minimum of that value when the current source is a constant current source, anything violated there will not allow that VDS to remain in saturation, which means the device will then it will not give you a constant current. Is that correct? That means the bias point will shift away. Is that clear? And therefore, these are the two swings voltages in which common mode signals are possible to be amplified. Okay. The current source will not act like a current source because that VDS will be then smaller than VGS minus VT for that current source. So, device will enter uh, linear mode. So, it will act like a resistor there. Okay, and very small resistor. If it is large resistor, there is no problem because it is still a constant current source. If it becomes smaller resistor, that is the issue. And then we will say CMRR will go to 10 dB. Okay, that is what happens. Current source is not coming from somewhere else, it is a part of the diffam actually. And the way it will create it, I have just showed you how will I are going to create that. Okay. There will be a transistor sitting there. Okay. Is that okay? Okay, so, having shown you, so ICMR is VC max minus VC min. So, you yes, subtract karo that is the range in which. So, many times when I design an op amp, one of the specs they give me this is the ICMR, okay. this is the ICMR. So, I actually from there I know what values I have now value I can get out so that the ICMR is within the range given to me. So, they may give you minus 2 to plus 2 or plus 3. So, I must now work within this range. So, at no time the device W by L's and the currents I use should go beyond these values to make device going out of this range. Is that clear? That is something one has to design. We take care of ICMR day 1 because that is the limit I always see. Okay. Okay. The current source must remain current source. That means it must saturate there. But that is always because that I, I, ISS if it comes out of it will not as long as that current is constant that device is in saturation anyway. Even at the age of this ISS is still flowing that will still ISS by 2 will still make M1 saturated. But that as soon as this is conditioned that will automatically get satisfied. We chose ISS such that M1 M2 get satisfied half the current will make both saturated. As long as you are on the edge, you are still satisfying the upper condition. If you get out of that, that the current source does not remain same current or much smaller, then both will come out of saturation anyway. Not only this, the upper one will also and that is why I say we say input it will come out of it. Okay. So, device will not in the linear mode anyway. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, to some extent, yes. Okay, uh, when I design a current source, I know that voltage, what the VDS I am using. Okay, is that clear? This will be close to VT. Okay, so we say VT plus some, plus some as we call. It. Okay, so we know that value. Yeah, so uh, best current source will be VDS larger than that. So at the age, it will be VDS minus VT is VDS. So we say VT. Okay, 
तो एक VT ड्रॉप है डिफरेंस VGS माइनस VDS में तो डिवाइस सैचुरेशन पर है दैट्स द क्राइटेरिया तो थोड़ा सा उसके ऊपर रख देंगे तो सैचुरेट हो जाएगा इज दैट ओके एनालॉग सर्किट्स आर ओनली 10 टू 20 परसेंट ऑफ एनी मिक्स सिग्नल चिप विच यू यूज लाइक ए वायरलेस मोबाइल और एनी अदर बट इफ दैट 10 टू 20 परसेंट सर्किट डजेंट वर्क वेल यू आर एटी टू नाइन्टी परसेंट डिजिटल विल फेल इमीजिएटली बिकॉज यही सब कुछ करने वाला है समझे फ्रंट एंड है ऑल एनालॉग ब्लॉक्स आर एट द फ्रंट एंड इफ थिंग्स गो रॉन्ग एट द इनपुट एवरीथिंग इज आउट एनी वे तो आपको आवाज किसका कुछ भी सुनाई दे सकता है या नहीं भी सुनाई दे सकता है सो रिमेम्बर इट इज लाइक सेइंग दिस इज द पीपल हु कंट्रोल एवरीथिंग इन द वर्ल्ड राइट नाउ ओके ओके सो वी आर सीन कॉमन मोड सो लेट्स लुक फॉर द मेजर वरी मेजर इंटरेस्ट फॉर एस इज द डिफरेंस मोड कॉमन मोड इज वेरी स्मॉल वी आर ओनली ट्राइंग टू रिजेक्ट कॉमन मोड सिग्नल फाइन बट एम्पलीफायर इज नॉट फॉर रिजेक्शन एम्पलीफायर इज फॉर एम्पलीफिकेशन so let's see what amplifications we get and that's our major interest so we do the same defam once again shown here if i say i have a difference signal of v in 1 minus v in 2 that is our difference signal two input signal ka difference jo hai wo difference signal hai v in 1 minus v in 2 depending on if v in 1 is higher v id is plus if v in 1 is smaller v id is negative fair enough but otherwise difference is always there so i now play a game i say i apply vid by 2 here and i apply minus vid by 2 the other side so how much is the difference signal vid is that clear so when i say vid alternatively i can also assume that the one of them is grounded and this input is vid so vid minus 0 is still vid so if there is a single input the other input this is what opan is doing and why i am showing you is this okay do you recollect that first circuit which i showed you in most cases this is grounded one of the terminal is grounded and you give input only at the other end this condition is exactly what i am showing one input is given here the other input is grounded so automatically input signal become different signals this is what you actually do in op amps equivalently saying this is what we are doing in a dip amp is that correct i appreciate i agree with you any day you do यहाँ से यहाँ कुछ वोल्टेज मेजर करो यहाँ से यहाँ वोल्टेज मेजर करो यदि मुझे डिफरेंस सिग्नल लेना है तो हमेशा वी आई डी रहेगा इन रिस्पेक्ट टू वॉट एवर वे यू डू द डी सी बाइसिंग इज नॉट कंट्रोल बाय दिस डी सी बाइसिंग इज ओनली कंट्रोल थ्रू आई एस एस सो आई एम नॉट वरीड अबाउट द स्टेटस ऑफ एम वन एंड एम टू हाँ सो आई एम ओनली इंटरेस्टेड टू सी वी ओ वन माइनस वी ओ टू डिवाइडेड बाई वी एन वन माइनस वी एन टू आई नेवर सेट एनी मोर देन दैट it doesn't matter as long as you take a different signal here how does it matter we are also taking a difference of vo1 minus vo2 you got the point in respect to whatever i do here this will be different in two cases as you are saying but the difference should be will come same that is what we are trying to say this is what superposition is trying to say actually and now okay you wait for this i will show you this is called when the superposition is possible this is called half circuit analysis circuit which i have shown you is called half circuit analysis and when this is valid we'll explain you when this is valid if this potential is constant this half circuit analysis is valid there is a theorem for it okay what you are questioning can be proved okay that this writing equivalent of half by 2 is equivalent of saying vid and zero but so is the difference in the output voltage will corresponding to the values here and here so if they change so is this change so difference will as long as you are in linear the difference will remain same independently that's exactly what i'm saying what you are asking is what i'm saying it will always this lower will change this this higher will change this the difference will be as much as saying one goes up the other goes down if this goes up this goes down so difference is same 
as the condition I keep saying linear, as long as they are in a linear situation, this will occur like this. If this is going higher, this will go low, this is equal or equal then 0, that is that will come like this. Is that clear? So, our assumption is not, if I say equal means what, what condition I am saying? Equal means common mode, yeah, output is 0. Is that point clear? In common mode, both sides VID by 2, yes, VO1 minus VO2 is 0. Otherwise, one is higher, other is lower, or other way, depends on the sign. Is that clear? So, in essentially, we are saying this is always valid as long as this voltage is constant. We will prove this point called half circuit analysis. Okay. Oh, sorry, everywhere. Please, uh, now in onwards, never ask me. Okay, I am very sorry. If I do not write in you, do not ask me unless I said it is single rail, you assume everywhere dual rail. Okay. Is that point clear? What is the difference signal we are looking at? I, what she is questioning is very good, but she what I am saying any if do not take half minus half, half minus half, then one of them will conduct heavily, other will be smaller as they change. You change the polarity, still it will be opposite way it will move. Okay. So, difference at the output will remain same independent way how input goes. The way input goes, so if the output will shift corresponding. Okay, and condition is linearity is maintained. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. By now logic, V R D is equal to V G S one minus V G S two because source is common. Okay. What is V R D? V G S one minus V in one minus V in two, so which is V G S one minus V G S two. If V R D is positive, what does that mean? VGS is your queries are now coming, your answers are now coming. If VID is positive, VGS1 is larger than VGS2. If VID is negative, VGS2 is larger than VGS1. Okay. In the first case, IDS1 will be larger than IDS2. In the next case, IDS2 will be larger than IDS1. Okay. Jiska bhi VGS jada hai, wo jada current draw kar lega. VGS minus Vt ka square hai. So, whichever has larger VGS will pull more current, whichever has a smaller VGS will pull less current. So, it can also occur for a given value of Vid, the other transistor may switch off. Say, is that point clear? If I change Vid, this other is opposite of that. So, that becomes smaller and smaller. So, that transistor may switch off one of them, all the current will be drawn by only one side, is that clear? If I change VID from say minus to plus, one of the transistor may actually go high, draw start drawing higher and higher current, the other will start reducing. At a given VID, the device the other side may become off, all of the current will be picked up by the higher VGS ones, okay, all of it. That means when VGS2 goes less than VT, that transistor will be switch stop, whichever VGS goes less than VT, that transistor will switch off. Then the one which has larger VGS will draw all the current, is that correct, clear, all the current. So, we may say whichever is fully on transistor, it will draw all ID in the, let us say in the case VID was such that VGS 1 is greater than VGS 2 and VID is increasing, VGS 2 is going down. So, in that case, IDS2 is 0 and IDS1 is equal to ISS. All the ISS is now flowing in that transistor. Is that okay? All, all of it is going through one arm. Okay. What is the condition I am using all the circuits? Please remember if I add lambda here 1 plus lambda VDS, what will happen? This equation will become nonlinear okay, and then I will have to really do on the spice only and not analytically. I am not adding those terms because otherwise solving numerically is the only possibility. Is that clear? So, in when the problem you will solve in the uh, tutorial which I am now giving next time, you will you first learn spice and then that time lambda need not be 0. In fact, you do this analysis put lambda 0 and put lambda 0 0.01 or 0 0.02 and see what difference it gives. It will give relatively sufficient difference and that is one of our worries also. Is that point clear? 
if I change VID such that 1 VGS1 start increasing and VGS2 small, then VGS2 may go below VT, M2 transfer may switch off, all M1 will draw full current ISS. Is that clear? This is what or vice versa can happen if I make VID minus larger then we say M2 will take all the current and M1 will become switched off okay. This is yes okay. Uh, so there will be some uh, maximum minimum VID in which one of the transistor will draw full current is that correct. So let us wait for that expression one can see from here sorry a root ana chahiye if vid minimum becomes equal to minus 2 root vov vgs minus vt we may say the transist let us say this is ids1 and this is ids2 maybe i should write this this is ids2 or oh sorry maybe ids1 this is id sorry ids2 so in minus m2 turns on Okay, and in plus M1 turns on. So, if it is like this, one zero se ISS jayega, dusra ISS se zero ke taraf. Where they will meet? Which point? ISS by two point. They will both VID by two and minus VID by two. Par wo dono ek dusre ke equal ho jayenge. Is that clear? This essentially is saying. Except for these ranges, currents are not linear. Is that correct? Currents are not linear except for these ranges. So, root 2 VOV minus 2 plus root 2 VOV may he input signal with the raha VID raha, then only amplification in linear mode is linear linearity is possible. So, the limit of input for even different signal is there. Is that point clear? Earlier, कौन सा बताया था मैंने? Common mode. और मैंने difference mode को भी बोल दिया कि in between these two only values there is a linearity. And actually, you should not come even closer to this one because if you come closer here, there is no linearity. So actually, it should be less than that both side. Is that clear? Is that point क्या वहाँ at this curve they are not linear. So actually it should be away from the H points. What does that trying to tell you again small signal attitude aga usme? Do you get the point? If VID becomes larger then what will happen? Only one transistor will operate and it will go into a saturation value either minus or plus. Is that clear? So to remain both transistor in linear system you should not exceed VID within this more than these two ranges. What does that mean? VID should be small values. So again, difference amplifiers can only amplify if input sig difference signals are small enough. Is that correct? So, pahle baar mein common mode ka limit dikhaya, abhi maine difference ka bit limit diya. So, abhi ab ye kya ho raha hai? Because I have not shown you properly. This slope is very high. What is the typical slope of this lines? Do you know? is the value of gains open ended gains is 10 to power 4 and above. So if you let us take a case I have 1 millivolt signal. So how much will be output? 10 volt is that correct? 10 volt. If I have a minus 1 I have minus 10 volt but power supply the 5 or 5 hai to 10 to jai nahi sakta aapke paas. Is that correct? So even 1 millivolt difference signal may not be allowed if the gains are very high in the open ended system. That means no feedbacks, normal DFAM cannot take larger difference signals. Is that correct? Because the gains slope of these curves are very, very sharp 10 to power 4, 10 to power 5. That is what we design, in fact. So, where do you think the larger gain will help you in the case of which circuit? Reaches faster to plus VDD or minus VSS. What is this circuit should be called? Fast comparator. Is that correct? Small change. Output went to VDD or minus VSS. So output immediately came. To, you came to know whether it is plus or minus. So I compared the signal as fast as possible. Is that point clear? If the slopes are very steep, the gains are very high. 10 by that value gain 
requires a very small change at the input. Okay. So, if I say V in 1 is 0 or V in 2 is 0 and V in 1 is what I am trying to say is this which is interesting again you should know what I do in the normal case. Let us say this is my V in 1 and V in 2 is grounded. So, if my input is something like this AC signal as this crosses 0 let us say this is 0 it will show minus value if this crosses minus it will show plus value instantaneously instantaneously means finite time some nanosecond to microseconds okay. So, faster the switch will occur when so even with a small change over 0 it can show you an output going to 1 or 0 in some sense is that correct such are called fast comparators okay. So, kya condition hogi fast comparator ki? they should have very high linear gains okay why high linear gains ab gains kaise badhate hain ye abhi hum dekhenge how do we increase the gains okay defam ka gain 10 to power 4 ya 5 kaise karte hain usme aapne dekha ya koi beech mein koi stage laga hai na to iska bhi gain kuch hona chahiye aur uske followed ek aur stage humne lagaya hai gain stage okay so, in dono milke we must or even there is a buffer, buffer does not have a gain function, buffer is only going either to 0 or to 1 that means drive higher side or lower side will show what is buffer otherwise this is how the gains will be very very high is that correct very very high and that is exactly where op amps are used in such analog to digital applications is that clear why I am showing all this because most of the circuit did I what did I say they will be digital your inputs may come analog. So, I want to give them outputs ok ye lo mein bataya kya hai hmm? there where such circuits will be useful ok. Next time first thing we will do just we will first look into large signal operation what does that mean larger signals and then we will say what is the difficulty when I get a larger signal and then how much smaller signal I should get so that the thing which I said I will first do a large signal analysis and then we say okay what is it creating so okay reduce your signal to this value for good amplifiers is that okay. So, we next time start with large signal amplifiers please start reading into Cedra Smith which chapter I do not know there are they on side mass FET amplifiers is a separate chapter or bipolar I do not know I have not seen recently but maybe in the same maybe in the same. So, just look for this today's work and we will start with large signal and finally, we will give you defam is that clear. Fir mein kya karunga ki aisa ek mirror bolte hai beech mein aisa ek mirror dal dunga yadi dono sari same hai to isko sal karo isko double kar do bas isko double usko kar do bas aisa usko bolte half circuit analysis. Actually uh, yeah you have a point essentially it is a small V O V is uh, DC plus AC hai to DC to fixed hi hai you got the point that OV may OV are capitals ok essentially saying it is AC plus DC. So, DC value to fixed hai bias se. Free run. 